All right. Well, I hope you all are doing well today. Thanks for joining us for the comprehensive exam information session. Um, we've got a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to be respectful of your time, but um, there's a lot to cover in the comp exam. So bear with us and um, we'll get started. My name is Ashley Reeves. I am an advisor and program coordinator with the Operations Management Program. Um, and a little bit later, you'll hear from uh, Carol Alton, who is our assistant director. And she will really talk about things from the perspective of the comp panel. So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we really dive into anything, the, it's important to know that the comprehensive exam does consist of two parts. So there's a presentation and video that you will create. And then the second part is an oral interview. We're going to talk about these um, in in detail throughout this presentation, but um, if at any time you have questions, just think about them and uh, write them down if you need to. And then at the end, if you want to type them into the chat box, uh, we'll get to those questions for sure. But we, we may answer them, uh, so hang tight with those questions until the end. Okay, so let's go through step by step of the comp exam. Um, you guys are all probably at different parts, uh, different phases of the comp exam. Maybe it's a year away for you. Maybe you're kind of in the middle of it. Maybe you've got the oral interview coming up in the next week or two. Uh, wherever you're at in the in the process, we're going to dive in and, and go through it um, completely from the beginning. So the first step in the comp exam is to determine if you are eligible to take the comp exam. In order to be eligible, you would have uh, satisfied all four prereqs, which means that they were either waived for you when you were admitted based on undergrad credit or you've taken them through the program or through SAVER. Uh, the next step would be to make sure that you've taken at least eight grad level courses. So that's going to include the four core classes as well as at least four um, electives of your choosing. Now transfer credit isn't, isn't factored into that, so it's just OMG2 classes that you've taken here at the U of A. Um, and you do have to have at least a 3.0 among all those classes. Now some students decide to take the comp exam uh, right after they've got eight classes, and some will wait to take them um, later, maybe after nine or even ten classes. You can take it at any time after you're eligible. You can wait until you're done taking classes so that all you have to do is the comp exam. It's totally up to you. Whatever you choose to do is fine. So once you've determined that you're eligible, you will apply for the comprehensive exam. Now, the application is out there on the MSOM website. On the right-hand side, you'll see a little tab that says comprehensive exam. Uh, click on that and you'll find all kinds of great information, of course, about the comp exam, including the application. Um, now, you can only fill out this application once you are eligible, um, and it's only open for the current ter term. So right now, it's only open for spring comprehensive exams. Later on, we'll open it for summer exams and then fall, etc. So um, you can't apply for a year out. You can only apply for the, certain, or the current term. Um, so that application, once you fill it out, is sent to your advisor. Your advisor is going to go through and determine that you are, in fact, eligible to take the comp exam. And if you are, they're going to add you to a Blackboard course. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, a common question that we get is, you know, right now it's eight week one of the spring term. Maybe you're not eligible until after the end of eight week one. Um, and that's okay. You'll just apply at the end of eight week one whenever you are eligible. Um, you can't apply before you're eligible, but as soon as you are, go ahead and apply if you're ready. So once your advisor determines that you are, are eligible, like I said, you'll be added to a Blackboard course. So kind of like all of your courses in the OMGT program are in Blackboard, um, you will then have a spring or a comp exam course as well. So in there, you're going to use Kaltura to record a presentation video um, that presentation is basically you'll create a PowerPoint and then you'll use that PowerPoint to give a presentation. Now we're going to really dive into that and talk about what all is included in the presentation, but just kind of keep in the back of your mind um, a couple of helpful tips. First of all, you're going to have both your PowerPoint and your webcam, so your screen view and your webcam view on the video whenever you create it. So kind of like how I am here where my video is the small inset, uh, my webcam is the small inset that you see, and my PowerPoint is the large portion of the screen, that's what you're going to want to do um, whenever you create your comp exam video as well. The second thing you want to keep in mind is that there um, is a strict 8 to 10 minute rule for your video. 
So it can't be less than eight minutes and it can't be longer than 10 minutes. Even one second and you may be asked to redo it. So definitely keep that um, in your mind as you, as you go through everything. So let's really talk about what you're gonna do with that PowerPoint and video. Um, the first thing you're going to want to look at is the instructions. Now the instructions are on the MSOM website at any time. You can look at those now. But then of course they'll be in the Blackboard course once you're added to that as well. So um, the instructions really tell you what needs to be on your PowerPoint. And you really want to precisely follow those instructions. You want to, to go by step by step and just really take it one by one and make sure everything's included in your presentation and that all of the little details are covered. So just to kind of quickly go through it, here's what your presentation will look like. You'll first talk about yourself. Um, previous education, your work history, those sorts of things, but keep that, that part brief. You want to spend the majority of your eight to 10 minutes on what I call the meat and the potatoes of the, of the uh, presentation, which is the seven MSOM program outcomes and the 10 OM decisions. So those program outcomes, again, they're listed on the website if you're not sure what they are. They'll be in Blackboard once you get to that point. Um, but you're gonna list those out one by one. And I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean by that here in a moment, but just think of one program outcome and then you, what you want to do is demonstrate your understanding of that program outcome using classes that you took within the MSOM program. So uh, one program outcome and then list a couple of classes if you can at least um, to really talk about that outcome, how you understand it, how you learned it, those sorts of things. You'll go by all seven of the program outcomes that way, and then you'll switch to the 10 OM decisions. Again, these are listed online for you if you're not sure what they are. But at this point, you get to talk about yourself and how the 10 OM decisions really play into um, your work history, your career goals, those sorts of things, what you plan to do with the, with the MSOM degree, basically. So let's see what it would look like um, sorry, if um, for the, the slide example. So as you can see here, I've got the, um, the program outcome one listed out. So you'll write it out and then underneath, you'll talk about the classes that you took that demonstrate your understanding of that program outcome. And you'll do this for each and every program outcome of all seven. Um, and we've really kind of helped you out because on the website, if you look at the comp exam instructions, you'll see that it has the program outcomes listed and then beside it, it has courses that you should have learned good information to demonstrate an understanding of each program outcome. So you really can just look through that list and decide which classes you took uh, and then just talk about how those classes, maybe it's case studies, projects you worked on, different things, helps you gain an understanding of that program outcome. So that is an example of what you'll do there. Once you've got that PowerPoint created, you, you do your video, you make sure it's between eight and 10 minutes, and you make sure that your webcam is a small inset and your PowerPoint is um, the larger portion of your screen, you'll upload it in Blackboard. Um, and at that point, the comp panel will go through and watch your video and make sure that it just makes, meets all of the criteria and in the instructions. So they want to, they're going to look for if you talked about everything that needed to be talked about, if you were within the 8 to 10 minutes, if you showed both your webcam and your screen view, all of those little things, they're going to go through and make sure that you um, completed within your video. Now this process can take up to a week, so just hang tight after you upload it. Um, and once it has been reviewed, you will be contacted. Um, if anything is uh, maybe not up to par with your presentation, you'll be asked to redo it. There's not a huge penalty for that. Um, it just is kind of a delay and everything. So um, you, you don't want to do that, but it's okay if you do. Now, if everything is good to go, if you're perfect, um, you will be asked to schedule the second portion of the comp exam, which is the oral interview. The interview, um, you're going to be giving given um, a couple of dates and times that you get to choose between, and you can either choose to come to Fayetteville, Arkansas and do your comp exam live in person, or do it on a video conferencing system called GoToMeeting, which is sort of like Skype. Either way, it's a live interview, live interaction with the comp panel. Um, so it will be three, there will be three people on the comp panel made up of MSO and faculty. And um, an important thing to remember is that all of the interview times are given on a first come first serve basis. What I mean by that is every step up until this point, 
has to be completed before you're able to schedule it. So if you're thinking right now you've got a date in mind that you want to do your comp exam this spring, you have to have uploaded the video and had it accepted before you can schedule that. So all of those dates and times are also first come first served. If everybody else that got in their video before you picked that date or that time that you wanted before you got to it, then that time would already be taken. Now, spring dates can fill up, so if you're wanting to take it this spring, if you're hoping to graduate or whatever, um, it's important that you get, get the ball rolling as early as you can. I understand some of you might not be eligible until after eight week one, and that's okay. Um, just apply and get the ball rolling as soon as you can if you're hoping to get things done this term. So I mentioned deadlines. Here's kind of a look at um, the exam dates that we have coming up this spring and then when their deadline is. So you can see in one column all of the, the exam dates, including tomorrow, and then when the deadline is. So when you would have needed to upload your PowerPoint and your video um, into Blackboard in order to be considered for that date. Now again, even if you upload, let's say you wanted the April 10 date, even if you upload on March 27th at 4.59 p.m., you met that deadline, you're not guaranteed a spot. If the dates are full before it's your turn to choose, then that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. So definitely be proactive with this. Get things done as early as you can in order to not um, stress yourself out in that situation. Summer dates will be released uh, later on in this term and then, of course, fall later on into the summer. So be looking for those. Your advisor should send them out to you uh, as soon as they're available. Okay, so once you've scheduled your... Um, oral interview part, you will just hang tight until that date. Um, like I said, the comp panel made up of three MSO and faculty members. They're going to ask you questions um, as they pertain to your presentation, the program outcomes, the OM decisions, basically anything that uh, you may have either covered on your presentation or even that you didn't. Um, it's important to brush up on course objectives and sort, certain things like that so that you're prepared to kind of answer any question about the courses that you took in the program. Um, you will know your grade for the comp exam by the end of it. So by the end of, of that 30-minute oral interview, you will know if you passed or failed, and then you can plan accordingly from there. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Carol Altum, who, like I said, is our assistant director. She's also um, on the comp panel. So she's going to talk about things from the, um, from the view of the comp panel and some study tips and how things work from there. So I think she is on and I'm going to let her take it over from here. Hi everyone. Uh, just as Ashley said, I'm Carol Altum, the Assistant Director of the program. I've been with the program for over five years, so I've seen hundreds and hundreds of comp exams. I'm here to give you some tips and um, a viewpoint from the comp panel member. Okay, let's start uh, with the PowerPoint slide. So when you start planning for your comp exam, you're gonna want to create a power, your PowerPoint presentation. Um, again, Ashley mentioned the specifics about it. Remember to list the seven program outcomes. I like when students list um, each of the outcomes in separate slides and then underneath each outcome list two or three or more if you want. Um, courses that relate to each of those outcomes. And then at the end, um, discuss uh, the 10 OM decisions as they relate to either what, you, what you, uh, your experience now, what you do at work, or what you plan to do in, in a future job. Um, also, keep in mind that we, we like to see the student discuss each of their courses throughout the presentation. So you can mention, it's good to mention each of your courses um, in one of the slides of your program outcomes. And remember, do not put any topic, case study, a project that you've done in class, do not put it as a bullet point in your slide unless you're prepared to discuss it. Because we've seen several times where students put information on their slides we ask about it during the um, interview and they can't elaborate on it. And it doesn't look good for the student. So anything that you put in your slide should be something that you've studied very recently and you can elaborate it during the interview. Uh, 
Okay, so for your video presentation, I like when a, a student can be heard and is loud and clear. I like using a headset or, you know, some students wear earbuds. It's quite all right. Um, make sure that, um, that your video and um, your audio match because it's a little distracting when it doesn't. Um, also, make sure that when you do record your video that you don't have any distracting noises, um, people walking in and out of uh, the webcam view or any pets um, barking or walking across your, your desk. Uh, we've seen it all. Um, just make sure that it's, um, professional, it's as professional as you can. Um, we don't require any uh, professional uh, attire, but we do recommend it. Um, any uh, uniform that you, you use at work is, is acceptable. Um, we just don't want to see a student um, do their video in um, shorts and a t-shirt or in their pajamas. We, you know, we just want you to make sure you present your best self and usually it's professional attire or anything that you would wear to work. Um, we have a lot of military members who are students and they'll wear the uniform of the day and that's perfectly acceptable. And again, um, we stress that the video must be between eight and 10 minutes. Many times, you, because it's such a short amount of time, uh, students are uh, cut it off about nine minutes and 59 seconds and that that's the best. Um, just make sure it's less than 10 minutes. Also, um, Ashley mentioned exactly what should be in the presentation. Um, your, your first couple of slides on your education and your work experience should be limited to no more than a minute of the 10 minutes. So if you're past one minute and you're still talking about yourself, cut yourself off and go on to uh, talk about the program outcomes. Okay, during the oral interview, again, it, it lasts only 30 minutes, so there's only a limited amount of questions that the three panel members can ask. Um, we're going to focus on the four uh, required courses, that's intro, project, uh, econ decision making, or finance, or strategic management. And then we will also get, um, also get to your elective classes. Um, but we do focus on those four required classes. Again, there's three panel members. We will have about 10 minutes each. Um, and most of the time we are asking questions um, on the, asking questions on the classes that we've taught. And, and sometimes um, we will ask a student a question and they don't, they can't give us an answer at all. Um, when you're in that situation, just answer it as best you can as it relates to the question. If you cannot, if you don't know the term, um, just let us know. I, I don't, you just said, I don't remember studying that. I don't recognize that term. The panel member will give you a hint. Will talk about it and then maybe you can pick it up. If you still don't remember, then you can just say, I, I don't remember. Um, but if you do know something about the subject, just tell us what you know about it. Again, we're going to focus on the required courses, but we'll touch on all of the courses that you've taken, including your electives. When you study, um, look over your syllabus and your course objectives for each of the classes. And I'm just going to go over a couple of the course objectives for finance, just as an example. Um, and again, make sure that if it's in your presentation or if you mention it in your video, um, you can elaborate it elaborate on it during the interview. Um, as an example, I had a former student in my finance class 
um, do the comps, and I was on um, on his comp exam, reviewed the video, saw that he mentioned the Dutch auction for it was under finance class. And I thought, well, I'm going to make him look good, and I'm going to ask him about the Dutch auction because I don't know if any other student ever in the history of comp exams has ever mentioned the Dutch auction. But we did study that in class, so I was going to make him look good and so he could tell the other exam uh, panel members what the doc Dutch auction is, um, what we studied on it. I mentioned it during the interview and he could not tell me what, he couldn't even define it. So he couldn't even explain what it was, give me a definition or what we did in class. So it ended up being really bad for him. So I'm not sure why he put it on his presentation. You do not want that to happen to you. Okay, so the, these are the first couple of objective, objectives for the finance class, and I just wanted to review it with you so you know what to study when you um, start studying for all of your classes. So the first objective says explain and apply the concept of time value of money. So if you just look at the verb and verbs and say, and it says explain and apply. We're not going to ask you to um, write out uh, an equation, but we will ask you, we may ask you about the elements um, that pertain to the time value of money. So explaining and applying is, is basically says that you have a deeper understanding than just identifying what the time value of money is. So um, if you can explain and apply the time value of money, you, you know, you need to know that you, you have the elements include the present value, the future value, um, an interest rate, and the number of um, periods. So then you can, then we, uh, we know that you understand you need those elements to determine what the time value of money, the future value, the present value of a certain amount. Um, the second objective says discuss decision making of effectiveness in, in, in a list of terms. So when you look at the verb, it says discuss the decision making effectiveness, you know we need we want you to explain what those terms mean, how they relate to operations man, uh, an operations manager in in the finance area. So it's um, uh, it's not as deep as the first objective saying explain and apply the concept of time value of money. So we just want you to understand, what these topics are. So when you look at the objectives for each class, make sure that you look at the verb and see what level of understanding you need for each of the concepts. So you're not studying the entire finance book. You, you know what you need to know for each of your classes. Okay. Um, now, if you have any other questions, Ashley and I are here to answer any of your questions. Yeah, if you want to type them into the chat box, um, we'll be able to, to see your questions and answer them. Just wait a few minutes while the questions come in. Okay, so Joyce asked, can we know who all will be on our comp panel when we schedule it? The know your audience concept. Carol, do you want to take that one? She may have signed off. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Um, right. We, um, yes, you will know who your comp panel is. Um, but Ashley, you may know, you may have the better answer. Yeah, so um, we don't generally tell if, if the comp, who the comp panel is, um, but if it's something that you want to ask, you're welcome to ask who it will be and just know in, that you, that it could change. So if, um, if I tell you, you know, four days in advance, this is your comp panel, most likely it'll be that, but if, if someone on the comp panel has to switch it out, those things happen. Um, but it's a pretty small pool of MSO and faculty that we that we choose from for the comp panel, 
Um, so we can always put that list out there too. And I'll just let you know that it's either me, Dr. Rich Ham, Dr. Greg Parnell, who's our director, um, Professor Emily Nichols, so that's four, and then we have two full-time instructors, um, Dr. Kerry Beam and Professor Leonard Nethercutt. So there's six of us that will um, may be on the panel. So three of the six of us will be on the panel. Right. Okay, so Sarah asks, since the presentation is a brief understanding, are note cards allowed for the oral? Good question, Sarah. Um, no, we don't allow any note cards or notes um, for the oral interview. Um, it's strictly re relying on your uh, your memory and understanding of certain topics. And and also you won't have time to look at your note cards. It's um, Again, it's only 30 minutes, so we're just going to, you know, once we ask a question, we just um, expect the student to start talking. So you, you won't even, notes aren't, and textbooks aren't allowed, but I mean, typically you, you just won't have time to, to look it up. Okay, so Demetrius asked um, if you should study at a high level or just what's included in the presentation. Um, and Carol can elaborate on this. Mostly what's included in your presentation is going to be what's covered, but it's important to, to be prepared to talk about any concept from any class, especially if you might have neglected to really give enough detail in your presentation. Um, Carol, do you have anything to add to that one? Um, no, but every, every class will be discussed during the comp exam. So yeah. you, you will get questions that you didn't address in your presentation. Right. Of the main concepts for each, for the, for that particular class. Yeah. And it's important to, to keep in mind that um, nobody wants you to fail. In fact, they want you to pass. We want you to graduate. Um, not that we want to get rid of you. We just want you to graduate. So um, it, it's not out there for it to be trick questions and things like that. It, it, like Carol said, it's the main course objectives from each course that they're they're wanting to test your understanding of as it relates to the program outcomes and the object, uh, the MSOM, um, OM decisions. So keep that in mind. No one's out there to, to really pull one over on you. So if as long as you're studying those main course objectives um, and you can elaborate on the things in your presentation, you're most likely to be okay. Um, and, and and also, um, we, we will know if you've studied or not. We've had um, a straight-A student fail their comp exam because we, we just we know he didn't study. And, and, and studying requires that you review the concepts, you know the terms. So if, you're, if you kind of understand what's going on, like let's say finance, but you can't think of the terms, then we know that you didn't glance over your notes. You, you just didn't do any studying. So that has happened where we failed a straight A student because they just didn't study for it. So the comp exam requires studying. You can't just wing it. We, we've had students who try to do that and, and weren't successful. Yeah, they always know if you, if you just tried to wing it at the last minute. Okay, so Austin's asking, are there a set number of spots available for each date, and is there a way to know how many spots are left? Um, so yes, there is a set number of spots for each date. I'll tell you that when we do comps, um, like Carol mentioned, there are six people that could potentially be part of your panel. Um, there are only three on the panel at a time, but we pull from six people, six uh, faculty members, and they're back-to-back -back all day long. When we have a comp day, it is first thing in the morning until uh, 5 p.m. Central, and, and it's just back-to-back, 30-minute -back, session, 30-minute session, 30-minute session, back-to-back -back with barely even a lunch break. So um, we do cram in as many students as we can uh, into each day. We don't post how many dates are available or the sessions are available um, currently, but if you're ever curious, if there's still spots on a date, you can email me at any time, and I can always look at that for you. Um, but yeah, so there are a set number of spots, which is why it's really important to get going on um, the application and, and your presentation materials as soon as you're eligible and as soon as you can if you plan to test in that term. I don't want to rush anybody and say, get started now if you're not 
going until the fall, um, it's just important to be aware that things do fill up, especially those toward the end of a term. So coming up in May, that's our biggest uh, graduation time. So the, the majority of our students, are not the majority of our students, a, a big chunk of students are going to be trying to graduate in May, um, which means that they're all going to be trying to do their comp exam at the same time. With limited number of slots, that's not always possible. So the best way to ensure that you get a spot is just to, to get things going as early as you can. Let's see, lots of questions. Are prereq courses discussed? Um, not particularly. They're not going to say in this prereq course X, Y, and Z was discussed, but of course those play into your grad level courses too. You don't necessarily have to brush up on those. It's just important to keep that in the back of your mind that all of the prereq courses do play into certain 5,000 level courses that you may have discussed or uh, taken. Anything to add on that, Carol? I don't want to rush her. If I'm no, we, we won't ask about prereq courses. Okay. And Nino asks what the pass percentage. Um, it's, it's high. We don't really have a percentage of who passes and fails, but um, the beauty of this system is that you're, you make that presentation and video, which really kind of forces you to study. It forces you to go back through your classes and really think about things that you might not have taken. You know, it might be two or three years ago that you took a class that you're not going to be tested on. So making that presentation really, really helps you to go back and look through your notes and, and your textbooks and things like that. Um, so it's a pretty high pass rate since we've changed to this, but like Carol said, they can tell instantly if somebody didn't study, if they just kind of threw their presentation together. The bare minimum is, is pretty easy to point out. So as long as you study, um, you're generally okay. The, Anything to add on that one? Yes. Um, before we made the video and PowerPoint presentation required, the pass rate was about 90%. Now it's, it's much higher because of what Ashley said. It, the process requires a student to review what they've done um, for each class. So the, I would say the pass rate is closer to about 97, probably 98 percent. That doesn't mean don't study because it's a high pass rate. It means that there's a high pass rate because everyone is studying. <laughs> Um, okay, so James asks, how would you suggest a person prepare for the presentation on classes that were taken a while ago? That guy read his mind. Um, current information for studying an older class. So my first bit of advice would be, of course, to keep your notes, your syllabus, your book from every class until after the comp exam. Um, that's the best way to go back through. If you're if the professor who taught that class is still here, of course, there's a directory on our website, so you can always look up their email address, or if you kept your syllabus, it would be on there, um, and they might have any of the information for you, but if it's a professor who no longer is with our program, that might be a little bit more difficult, so you might want to work with your advisor um, to see if they recommend someone else who might have some information. Anything to add on that one, Carol? Yeah, hopefully you have your syllabus and review it with the course objectives. Um, nowadays, you, you really don't need your, your, I mean, you need, if you have your textbook, keep your textbook. But let's say you took the class four years ago and you just don't have, you moved and you don't have your textbook. Um, you could look up the concepts and topics online, um, but you would need your you know, the syllabus and your course objectives to, to guide you. If you don't have those, then you can reach out to one of us and we could, we could pull the syllabus um, and then send you the course, uh, course objectives. Yeah, I'm going to point out a couple more things, um, resources for you. On the operations management uh, homepage, you will see um, at the top, resources. If you click on resources there, um, one of the things is a PDF that gives you course descriptions and objectives. So you can find the objectives for your courses there, too. Another thing is that some of um, some professors put their syllabus out on the syllabus bank, which is really just syllabus.uark.edu. Let me type that in there. Make sure I spell it right. Um, you can search for classes there, and if the professor uploaded their 
their syllabus there, you'll be able to find it. Or you might be able to find a similar one from another professor too. So that's a good um, couple of good websites maybe to bookmark and, and keep on hand for while you're studying. Okay, three so asks, do the questions depend on the subjects we take during the course, electives and required? Yes, so everything relates to whatever OMGT courses you've taken at that point. So if you've taken eight or nine or ten courses in the OMGT program, that's what you'll be tested on. You won't be tested on classes you didn't take. The comp panel will know what classes you've taken um, while you're testing, so you won't be tested on anything that uh, you didn't take. But yes, the electives are included in that too. Okay, Ed asked a good question for you, Carol. Um, how many questions are normally asked in the oral interview? I would say, I mean, it could be about 30 or more, three per, per, cl per class. Um, and, there, and I say, say more because um, if the student has studied and can just spit out the answers, then we'll ask more questions. But I would say approximately 30. I have never um, uh, you know, checked how many we asked during a, a comp exam. Okay. And so yeah, just to reiterate, it is a 30 minute session, that oral interview. So do plan on being there for the whole 30 minutes. Um, James asked a good question for you, Carol. What happened to the straight A student that failed? Did they get a second attempt? Yes, they got a second attempt. Um, yes, if you do fail, we give you a second attempt. Um, and students study. After they fail, they will study and they will do well. Yeah. And one important thing to remember, I keep trying to really drive home the, the don't wait until the last minute thing because um, if you do happen to fail, the earlier that you have taken your exam, um, you might still be able to get on the schedule for later in that same term to do your, your redo. Um, if you wait and you're, you're doing your exam maybe the last comp date of the spring, of course, then you would have, if you needed to redo it, you would have to wait until the summer or the fall even um, to be able to, to retake your test. And if, if you're wanting to graduate, that's something to consider because you can't graduate until you're done with the comp exam. And when you when you fail, you don't have to redo your video. I mean, if it was acceptable the first time, then we'll accept it again. Um, but you will just have to redo your oral interview. Okay, so Courtney's asking if you can do the comp exam in Jacksonville. Um, no, we only do it here in Fayetteville um, or on GoToMeeting at this point. Stephanie says, will GoToMeeting be a video conference or just voice? It is video conferencing, so you will need your webcam. Um, yeah, she wants to make sure she has your, yep, you'll need a webcam. <laughs> Let's see, and then Maria says, and the PowerPoint should we be specific or general in the case studies we give as an example? Um, so Carol, what do you like to see when you're looking? Do you want them to, to really be specific on the case studies that they talk about to demonstrate an understanding of the program outcome? In the presentation, in the actual PowerPoint slide, it's prob you'll probably just have, you know, a short bullet, but then in the, um, in the actual presentation part, when you record your video, um, I would expect you would elaborate more on, on whatever, if it's a case study or a project at work. Uh, if you've listed it in the, um, in your actual slide, I, I would expect you to elaborate a little bit on it during in the video. All right, you guys have asked great questions. If you think of other questions, you can send them to your advisor or to me at any time. Um, it's important to, as you're going through the comp exam to just really take it step by step. That's kind of why I broke it down into so many steps in this presentation is um, it's important that you, you just focus on one step at a time. Get through that one and then work on the other one good to see the whole picture, but it can be overwhelming. Um, it's a big process, so take it step by step and just concentrate on that one thing at a time and, and you're going to be fine. And so, yeah, Mark's asking if we can access this recording later. Um, yes, I will. We're recording it and we'll get it cleaned up and then we can send it out to anybody who wants it. Carol, anything to add before we sign off? 
No, oh, just, one make, just make sure to study and you'll do well. Okay, so Matt asked one more question. Um, are there previous videos of an interview we could watch? No, we don't. Um, we don't send out former students interviews um, to other students, but your advisor should be able to give you a copy of a PowerPoint example um, if you'd like to see that. So be sure to ask your, power, uh, your advisor if you want to see that. All right, well, we thank you for joining us today. We hope that this was helpful, but like I said, send me any questions that you may have or send them to your advisor. We're here to help you. We, we want you to do well in your comp exam, so send it to us at any time, and we want to help you. And apply early. <laughs> Y'all have a good day.